Hello there, this is John Franquiz, my final video on Abraham Lincoln's presidency. My last video, Abraham Lincoln was very, very happy. The Civil War had ended, uh, he had been re-elected, and the 14th Amendment had passed. But now, sadly, we have to talk about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was the first American president to be assassinated. There was a, a, an attempt on Andrew Jackson about 30 years earlier, and actually there was an attempt to kill Abraham Lincoln uh, about a year earlier. But he was the first American president to have been assassinated. And the assassin's name is John Wilkes Booth, an actor. John Wilkes Booth's plan, however, wasn't just to kill Abraham Lincoln. The plan was to kill Abraham Lincoln, kill the vice president, Andrew Johnson, and to kill the Secretary of State, William Seward. And if they could, General Ulysses S. Grant, I'll, I'll talk more about that in just a moment. He had a, a two uh, conspirators were Lewis Powell and David Harold. Now, David Harold's job was to assassinate Andrew Johnson. Now, the night that it happened, however, uh, David Harold chickened out and uh, he just lost his nerve. Same night, uh, Lewis Powell, however, I'm going to get to Lincoln in a moment, but Lewis Powell went to William Seward's house to assassinate the Secretary of State. The reason for this is that John Wilkes Booth, the leader, felt that if the president died, the vice president died, and the Secretary of State died, that the government that was in place right at that point would just collapse. And perhaps the South would have some kind of a fighting chance. I don't know what he thought. But going back to Powell, Powell, the same night that Lincoln was assassinated, Powell went to William Seward's house, the Secretary of State. Now, William Seward had a neck brace because he had fallen off a carriage uh, sometime earlier. Broke some bones. He had this neck brace around here. Powell actually went into the house and he, he knocked on the door. This is, this is how he got in. He knocked on the door and he said that he had some medicine. Uh, for Mr. Seward. They let him in, and his, as he was going up the stairs, William Seward's son, Frederick, came down and said, who are you? And he said, well, Powell said, I have some medicine. Frederick didn't believe him, and at that point, uh, Powell attacked Frederick, uh, bludgeoned him, stabbed him, ran up the stairs. He actually pulled a gun out on Frederick and tried to shoot him, but the gun misfired. He ran up and managed to get into William Seward's bedroom. And he pulled out a knife and stabbed William Seward repeatedly. But what happened? William Seward had that neck brace. And he did get sliced across the cheek, but the knife blocked against the brace, the splints that he had around his neck. Uh, after that, Powell ran away, uh, attacked one or two other people, attacked somebody by the door before he finally got out. On to Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was in very, very good spirits. Um, and... In his inauguration, he had mentioned uh, possible equality and the right to vote. And this is actually what angered the conspirators. They called it, well, he's, you know, uh, saying this is going to be, there's going to be black citizenship. They felt betrayed. I should mention that Abraham Lincoln actually had premonitions. He actually had a dream that he had been assassinated. In the dream, he says that he walked into a room and everybody's standing around a bed and he went up there and said, what happened? Who died? And they said, the president. And he saw himself dead lying on the bed. This is a dream that Lincoln had some days earlier. He didn't put much stock in dreams, Abraham Lincoln. He was actually very, very happy. The cabinet said, he had a cabinet meeting that day, and he was happier than he had been in a very, very long time. He took a carriage ride with Mary that day, and he was very, very cheer cheerful. Those who said that Lincoln had been very sad and despondent for so much time, so many months and years, had never seen him like this. Um, he felt that there would be a final, finally a durable peace at home, is how he worded it. John Wilkes Booth, the assassin, learned that President Lincoln and his wife were going to go to the theater, and that possibly General Ulysses S. Grant was going to be there too. Now, Grant was invited, but he declined. He didn't go. So Lincoln went to the theater that night. He arrived late, he got to the presidential box, and if you're wondering did, he, wondering, did he have a bodyguard? He did. Lincoln had a bodyguard, but the bodyguard, his name was John Parker. The bodyguard was actually sitting outside, and during the intermission of the theater, the show that they were watching, uh, the bodyguard left. He went to a bar to have, to have a couple of drinks. 
I don't know if it was around that time the bodyguard ever made his way back or not. He wasn't at his post when John Wilkes Booth got into the theater. Now, watching the show, Lincoln and Mary, they kind of like cuddled together. And then Mary made a comment saying something like, uh, oh, what are people going to say or what is what are people going to say our guests going to say when they see us you holding me like this and the president said ah, they won't think anything about it those were abraham lincoln's last words john wilkes booth made his way to the presidential box got into the presidential box uh lodged something against it so no one could get in pointed a gun at john, abraham lincoln's head and shot him behind the ear jumped over the balcony jumped on the stage and he got away uh, Lincoln obviously started bleeding and he was bleeding uh, profusely and it, it actually bled over Mary and she was screaming people made their way into the presidential box um, they took Abraham Lincoln they first they thought he was stabbed they put him down to the ground and they when they noticed that he had been shot behind the ear and they noticed that Lincoln was uh, having problems breathing the doctor that was there actually tried to dislodge the bullet. He couldn't get to it, but apparently he managed to get a blood clot out. Now, for whatever reason, it was this here, the left ear. For whatever reason, when they got the some of the clot out, Lincoln started to breathe better. They had to get to him out of there, but they couldn't put him on a carriage to the White House. They took him across the street to a boarding house. And while they were there, they tried to revive Abraham Lincoln. Mary was there and they took her out of the room. She was crying hysterically. Uh, around 7 a.m. in the morning, April 15, 1865, Abraham Lincoln was 56 years old. Seven o'clock the next morning, he passed away. General Grant said that uh, Abraham Lincoln was unquestionably the greatest man that he ever knew. In the past video, I did mention the uh, three and a half million slaves that were freed because of the 14th Amendment. And sadly, Abraham Lincoln was not able to push forward with his plans of reconstruction. We don't know if he would have succeeded at that. It would be a very difficult time for the coming president. More sadly for Mary, uh, she never really got over it. Remember, she lost two sons, Eddie and Willie. Now her husband, Abraham Lincoln, was dead. Uh, Mary would have a very, very sad and tragic life uh her next son tad would die a few years later at 18 and mary lincoln was known to go to, from hotel to hotel and wander the halls in her nightgown uh there was a suicide attempt she spent a few months in the mental institution committed by her own son robert the oldest now she did get some help there they say and but when she got out she never really forgave robert um i believe she passed away about 17 years after abraham lincoln but um i'm going to end this with the words of a black slave who said when uh his thoughts on his own freedom hi I had a little technical problem ending the video, believe it or not. Um, before I get to what I was going to say, there have been a lot of YouTube videos out there and calling Abraham Lincoln a racist and saying a lot of things that we whitewash history, saying many, many things that the Emancipation Proclamation didn't really free any slaves. They're correct on that count. The real freedom came from the 14th Amendment, but it was still Abraham Lincoln that did this. Uh... Whatever your opinion is, facts are facts. And every major historian that's ever written a book about Abraham Lincoln has not really shied away from those facts. So it's not like we're whitewashing history. There are historians, there are historians that are apologists, and there are historians that are revisionists. But facts are facts. The fact is the 14th Amendment did free the slaves. And uh, Abraham Lincoln was responsible for pushing it forward that he hedged and haw that it could have been a little faster is all possible but he managed to do it and i want to end uh these this series on abraham lincoln with the words of one black man that was uh, freed and what he said was this free 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 
Oh, how good it is to be free, to know that all that I have is mine, and that no man, black or white, can say that he owns my body or my soul. This was said by an elderly slave upon acquiring his freedom. This is John Franklis. Take care.